simultaneously steering a large number of agents to goal positions is a common challenge, whether you are an ant army trying to defend your home, just trying to get home after work, a densely packed warehouse of robots delivering products to be packed and shipped, or a marching band demonstrating your skills. There are many approaches, ranging from fully distributed solutions to fully centralized methods, such as warehouse robotics, air traffic control, and packet routing. In this work, we present a number of breakthroughs for coordinated motion planning. Our goal is to reconfigure a swarm of labeled convex objects by a combination of parallel, continuous, collision-free translations into a given target arrangement. Problems of this type can be traced back to the classic work of Schwartz and Scherer, who gave a method for deciding the existence of a coordinated motion for a set of disks between obstacles. Their approach is polynomial in the complexity of the obstacles, but exponential in the number of disks. Previous work has largely focused on pipelined sequential schedules in which only robots on the perimeter move, with objectives such as minimizing the number of moves. This differs from our objective, which is to minimize the overall time by exploiting parallel motion of many robots. A natural lower bound for the necessary time is given by the maximum distance from a start to a target location. The ratio between the achieved overall time and this maximum distance is called the stretch of a schedule. When is it possible to limit the stretch and achieve good schedules? That is the focus of this work. First of all, finding a reconfiguration plan with minimal execution is NP hard, even for a grid arrangement without any stationary obstacles. Here are various parts of the construction. See our full paper for details. Before we start with our algorithm, let us take a closer look at possible ways of rearranging robots. Because robot collisions are not allowed, direct swaps of adjacent robots are impossible. However, we can rearrange whole cycles of robots by moving them simultaneously. Combining several cyclic one-step moves within a six-pack substructure, we can achieve a swap of neighboring robots. These swaps can be performed in parallel for disjoint six-packs. There is a total of 12 different classes of six-packs, so a set of disjoint swap operations can be realized by a constant number of parallel rotation steps. Now let's consider a starting configuration that we want to rearrange into this target arrangement. Making use of the parallel local swaps, we can apply the parallel rotate sort algorithm of Marberg and Gaffney from 1988. Rotate sort achieves a runtime that is linear in the size of the perimeter of the bounding box. However, this does not achieve constant stretch if the maximum distance is small compared to the perimeter. So we need more refined algorithmic ideas. An idea is to subdivide the grid arrangement into D-sized tiles. Then we proceed in two phases. In phase one, we move each robot to the tile containing its target position. That is the tricky part. In phase two, we use rotate sort in parallel on all tiles to reach those final positions in O of D. Moving the robots to their respective tiles in phase one proceeds in four steps. First, we compute a flow that represents the number of robots moving between tiles. Note that the flow graph has a limited degree of eight due to the maximum travel distance of D. Second, these flows are pre-processed to remove intersecting and bidirectional edges. In a third step, the cleaned up flow is decomposed into a number of simpler pieces. 
which are then realized by parallel sets of cyclic moves in the fourth and final step of phase one. As the first step, we take stock of robots switching tiles. As no robots get created or destroyed, the result is a cyclic flow. There are configurations resulting in flows with crossing edges, as illustrated here. In the second step, the flow is simplified. If there are crossing edges in the flow graph, we use local modifications to uncross them. Bidirectional edges are removed in a similar manner. For the third step, consider a cyclic flow after preprocessing. We decompose it into a set of cycles with a flow value of 1. We remove self-intersections and partition the resulting set of cycles into clockwise and counterclockwise ordered cycles that are processed separately. We identify the union of the areas bounded by all cycles and remove the outer boundary component of the covered area. We repeat this peeling process until the entire flow graph is removed. This yields a tree-like structure of nested cycles, allowing us to compute a partitioning of the entire flow graph into subflows of value O of D. In the fourth and final step of phase one, we realize a single subflow by computing a crossing free matching between incoming and outgoing robots for each tile. By applying this technique iteratively, we realize a sequence of subflows as cyclic permutations of robots. In the end, all robots are in their target tiles after a total of O of D steps. Now we can proceed to phase two. In another O of D moves, Rotate sort delivers all robots to their target locations, and we have achieved constant stretch. The preceding description applies to robots at given grid positions. What happens in more general configurations? That depends on the proximity of robots. If the robots are not too densely packed, here is what we can do. There will be at most one robot per cell in an appropriate grid. We move them to appropriate grid positions, then apply the grid algorithm, then move them to their target positions. This achieves constant stretch. For very densely packed disks that cannot be well separated, no method can achieve a stretch factor better than O of n to the 1 over 4th. The proof considers the area of Voronoi cells during the reconfiguration, showing that they must grow by a certain amount. On the positive side, we establish a stretch factor of O of square root of n, even in this case. The intricate difficulties of computing precise optimal solutions are demonstrated by the seemingly simple case of just two disks, which is shown to be excruciatingly difficult to solve to optimality. These parallel motion schedules can be applied to real robots. Here you see a number of examples. Finally, here is a simulation of a bigger instance. done.